Good weekend morning, peoples. Two more videos to do. I'm going to do them separate. So here's Ybit and Bitto. So what happened on Friday? Well, Bitto was up 3.2%. And we lagged that a little with a 1.28% move. Uh, and we actually passed up one of our, the big um, strike price, 2807. But they actually did very, very well. They bought it back for less than five cents and it closed up seven cents. So I assume they probably caught a little period and I noticed where it was 28 or 2799, 2798 for periods of that time I was watching it. I also bought some more Ybit because it's cheap and it looks like it could be paying two or three dollars. Kind of hard to tell on a first payout. And the fact that they don't really have much short call income, most of it's synthetic, but hey, it's income, it's, it's booked income. So let's follow it across. So what did they do? They didn't add any synthetics uh, and there were no new shares added, but they did roll their synthetics as you would expect. So I left those in yellow and they captured, they got 40 cents here on 3,170. The other piece was 630 so altogether they had 3800 contracts right so they collected 126 800 and they only paid 15,000 back so they collected 111 and so that's not bad considering that they closed at 2807 right there were plenty of opportunities to buy it for three or four cents so they did so that's positive. This one kind of stumped me. They paid four cents, and this was a 30 strike price. Again, you know, it's my day to nitpick the fund managers. I'm like, well, it was never up in that area. Why not wait till the end and buy it back for a penny or two? I mean, when you only got 14 cents because you went way out, which is generally positive, you're, you're not gonna get capped and you're not gonna lose that. But four cents is 2,500 on 8,800. Minuscule revenue, really, but it's just mathematics. I, I don't fully understand it, right? Um, I mean, I know they operate in flex, and I've talked about that. And in flex, it's cash settlement. And you and I in retail, if I write a 30 call, I'm not going to be called out if it barely got to 28. I just let it expire worthless, right? And I keep all the call that I sold. But when they're in this flex world, it's kind of custom rules. So they choose, I'm giving you education here, folks. They choose what is called European settlement. And European version of options within flex means you can never be assigned the underlying stock because they can't be in this case it's Bitto, right so they can't really be assigned well i guess they could be assigned shares of Bitto because Bitto itself is is then tracking the cme uh, but the idea you know what i mean if this is a regular stock with the flex rules so what they do since you can't be assigned so they never have to worry about until they get, they can buy it back at any time, right? Cash settlement means at any point in time, you just ask to buy it back. But rather than just trade on bid and ask, I don't understand it well enough. I don't have a Bloomberg terminal and I'm not in the flex world where you have to have, it's really for institutional traders, you know, ETF funds and such. I just know what flex means and what the rules on flex are. Uh, within the option community. So that's what's driving this. But sometimes I don't understand four cents. I mean, if you're going to go to the end of the day, it's got to have a, you know, zero uh, ask 
so nobody can sell it, and, or sorry, a, a zero bid, you can't sell it for one cent going in when it's at 28, and I could see one cent for the ask, right? A bid of zero by an ask of, of one cent, and you buy it back for one. So I'm not really finding fault with these guys. I'm just pointing out some minor things, and, and hopefully that educates you. So anyway, they put on 38 cents by writing a 28.5. Now, I personally have a problem with that. Okay, here's my problem. Let's go look at the weeklies. So they put them all in one strike price. They could have picked a 28.50 or a 29, right, and got a little less money. So first off, there are, wait, did I update that? Is that really a 28? Oh my gosh, it's even worse than I may have thought. No, it's, it's 28.5. Okay, so they put on this 28.5. I mean, there's just so many numbers and I do different. Um, well, so the point there is they're only 43 cents, right? Which is 1.53% above that. So let me make sure, why is that? Oh yeah, that's the problem, I didn't update this. Okay, so it's showing the 1.53. But still, all the things I said apply. You only have four trading days, maybe they'll get lucky and they'll keep it. So they have 144,000 at stake and as you can see, they probably did this when it was lower in value, maybe trading at 27.98 or something, and they rolled it. And when they rolled into the next week, they are behind because they got, what did I say, 48 cents? 38 cents. And at the end of the day, it's trading at 54.5, right? Now, granted, that's four days. Right now, it's time premium because it is a 28.5, okay? So that'll decline some if it doesn't go there, but it could very easily go there, right? So they're 144, they'd have to pay 207. But again, when you have time, you don't too much worry about that. But since it's our, their weeklies and we're doing well, I want this to come out well. So on their synthetic, since we're out at 36s and we're trading down at 28s, we've got a 3.3 million loss, right? But that's coming down. It had been 3.6, it was 3.2 over here. So it's staying around that area. And if we look, no new trades on that, right? Uh, did I update these numbers? Maybe not, but it doesn't matter there. I have it over in holding, so it's pretty close. Um, so let's see if there's anything else in holding. So we, you know, fair value with the assets, no shares bought, right? So it's still 525,000, 10,780,000 in net asset value. So they're saying fair value is 20.54, so we're selling at a discount of three pennies, right? 20.51. So I definitely added, based on this kind of a stock price and having BTC, you know, through Bitto on the COMEX as an underlying, um, I'm pretty optimistic on this, you know, longer term, month or two out, three months out, just continuing to do well. So here on our payment, Right, we got this down because we collected some more money here in this May. And again, for those that haven't watched this, I took June and just added these two columns together. So this was real April because they started at the end of April. So in this case, we got five or six weeks. So we've been collecting good money on these synthetics. We've had four different synthetics. Look at this. This one has a 26, a 29, a 35, and a 36, and this one had the 26. So we closed out that 26, and then we, we had a few other trades that I counted in May, um, but this was the April value of closing out. So I don't know why I could have all just stuck it in May and called it May, but I broke it up, and then I added the two in June. So when I get ready to go to June, I'll clear it all out. 
So anyway, here we are. Well, you know, if this is accurate, I double checked it again today because there's a lot of numbers in there. You know, um, I'm showing almost eight dollars, right? Eight dollars and twenty-one cents. I mean, in theory, they could go pay four dollars. I just since it's a brand new fund, you know, will they? I don't know. So, and, and this is a two cent loss, just so you know, right? But, and that also assumes we collect that 144. So this could go up, but I'm thinking two to three dollars, right? That we get paid. And we really only have next week. And then we will do a roll on 31 and get a new weekly. So I'm kind of hoping it stays down and doesn't run a lot past 28.50. And let's see. I, I mean, this is, you know, this could be a big, big payout. But let's see what, what happens. Uh, so that's what I got for you guys. Um, I don't think there's anything I really need to go out here. Because of this 144 sale, right, that put a little more cash in their pocket. But other than that, no new shares, nothing really visible there. Uh, holdings kind of outlines. If anything, this is, as long as we move up the synthetic shrinks, it is a June 21st. So after next week or two, they need to move up closer to the 36, or then they'll take a loss. But I'm kind of focusing on this payout, right? I can't worry about what, what happens in after 6-5, which is declaration date. Uh, and this may take care of itself unless we run up past 28.50. Okay, guys, that's what I got for you. So I'll say happy weekend to everybody. Uh, and again, this is Bruce signing out. I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. This is for fun and entertainment only. See ya.